88 year old lady here. I gotta speak up a little louder for somebody. Somebody told me I'm not speaking up loud enough. Uh, 88, 88 year old lady. She makes it from the fifth floor, I think it is. And by the time she gets down to the garage area, someone from the 11th floor has already made it down there. They pick her up and help get her out of the building. The point being here is that this building was uh, gave a lot of signals before it collapsed. It's not like the video where we say it just collapsed. So this video, video, this building had a lot of shake to it. That guy in a 702, the 701, 711, whatever one has a video cam, um, aroma, that your answer to that is, that data tells me that the person with the 11th floor felt the vibration made it down. But at, this, at that room, that 700 room floor, it appears that we're looking at from the beginning of the vibration to the end of the vibration. So it took, uh, it, not all the building was vibrating. It, it, it's going to, that, that, if that video is full, it's not edited, um, then that, that does give us some other information to start thinking about. If you can overlay that room, that room is somewhere, I don't know, 701, something like that, 711. We overlay it now. We can see that his room only vibrated for like, what, five seconds or so before the collapse happened? But people came from the 11th floor all the way down, including this lady waking up, um, that made it down. Let's listen to her story. Well, we think that something like this would happen at 1.30 in the morning in your life. She says 130. I think the videotape says 120 timestamp. In all age, that I would see something so horrible like this. 88 year old Esther Gorfinkel was on the fifth floor. Fifth my floor. whole apartment shake. My bed, I was sleeping shake. I have my, my, my nightgown. I put a, a house coat. Alone, unaware of what happened, wearing only slippers, she headed down the stairwell as slowly as a shocked 88-year-old could. And when she reached the garage, help appeared from behind. It's so she was leaving out the garage area. She walked all the way down to the garage area on the fifth floor. So think how, she, how agile she may or may not be. But that's five flights of store, uh, five flights plus the basement. You can call it five flights if you like, or six. She was able to walk that far from her house, from her apartment before the collapse happened. She was able to do that. So it's, it's ringing true more so about that the building. I heard, I heard somewhere there was evacuation um, alarm going out, evacuate the building. She didn't say that, nor has anyone else stated that besides one person, and I don't know where it was. Um, the, uh, the flashing lights appear to be security lights, you know, the uh, hallway lights, emergency lights. So now we've got an issue now that this person's able to go down five flights, six flights, in fact, and get picked up by somebody else and carried out. Somebody who came from the 11th floor. If you do the timing of that, I don't know how fast he is, but he caught up with her. It's a group from the 11th floor, neighbors who would carry her out safely. And they pushed me out. And we got into water, and in front of it was a lot of debris, and we saw a hole. They picked me up. Got in front of me was a lot of debris. So maybe the garage already collapsed by then, as she saw the debris she's referencing. I don't think she's referencing the, uh, the collapsed structure. I think she's referencing the collapsed um, floor. Carry me on my on his back, outside, and I saw the sky. I know I will be out. We interviewed Albert Aguero last week. He was one of the men who carried Esther out, and he reflected on their encounter. She was obviously shaken. She was like, I've lived a good life. I'm good. I was like, no, no, you're going to make it to the 89th birthday. I promise. You remember that? Yeah, it's true. Right? I remember everything. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are heroes and uh, angels, really, because they saved my mom's life. Esther now remembering the friends and neighbors that she lost. My heart is broken because let me tell you, I have a friend on the third floor who's her husband. I don't see their there more anymore. And an older lady that used to be in the seventh floor, she's gone too. And it's killing me. And cherished memories are gone. My mother's wedding pictures, my children. 
It's worried about pictures in the server death. Um, the, uh, I didn't look at that one. There's one more, no. I think it's, uh, this one. Investigation, the concerns, and of course, or in his parents' apartment, he returned to his own condo with... Sorry, I can't turn it up. ...is in the east side and the same complex, but just two blocks away, only to be awakened by a terrible noise. I thought it was a tornado outside my apartment. I opened the door. I told my wife, oh, my God. <laughs> Building's not there. He basically, I think he shared a room with an apartment, a uh, condo with his mother and father, and him and his wife lived there. And uh, he, when he opened the door, they were gone. The other half, of the, the other part of the structure was gone. What do you mean? <laughs> my parents' apartment's not there. Can you just imagine? Uh, Sergio said. All right, they were in bed together, etc. Um, uh, the uh, so this lady was able to go from the fifth floor all the way down. That's important. Thanks, Aroma, for. Having that on your on your page there, so that tells you now that we definitely have two collapse, multiple collapses here, vibration going on. It's not an immediate collapse like the video shows us, where it just looks like boom gone. No, no, this lady came from the fifth floor. We don't have an immediate uh, collapse. We have partial partial failures. Well, we got the deck failure first, I believe. And this is interesting. I, I said in a couple of videos back, maybe it's internal column. Uh, the stairwell is very telling now that she made it down the stairs. So this data that she gives, and the guy made it from the 11th floor that he gives, that we need the timeline, but it's going to be very telling because it's going to tell you the stairwell was still intact while the hurricane, why this, um, why this was taking place. The stairwell is. Um, I think this is the stairwell over here. I think I saw it somewhere else in a better detail. It was a better detail actually showing stairs. But I believe the stairs over here. But Oh, that's penthouse stairs. Sorry. I get my stairs mixed up penthouse with the uh, regular staircase. But we'll find that in future videos. And we'll go over the uh, staircase. That The staircase was not engulfed at that time with the collapse. The five foot, so that's going to be that's very telling data from this uh, survivor. I don't, I want to, I'll call it witness. I'll call it survivor. I need to give clarity on this that this might be two levels of decking, um, elevation 13 feet, elevation 13 four, elevation 12 nine. <sighs> so I did the video saying the engineer didn't put it that this is not flat. I don't know that to be 100% true anymore. These might be elevations. Elevated deck, step ups. Um, I might, uh, and here's 1110, there's 129. In the real life pictures, though, it, before the collapse, this has a definitely a pitch on it coming away from the pool and coming down. You guys can find that. I can't, I can't chase down all these images right now. But if you, it was, it's, it's tapers away. Now there's supposed to be floor uh, floor drains in here over here roughly and a couple other places that I saw in the uh, in the architects drawings. But now remember this is the same guy that did the roof, so I don't imagine he made a flat deck for the hell of it um, without a pitch that he didn't resolve that because he resolved it as you guys know in the uh, deck in, in the in the uh, in the roof image. So you're telling me now this guy. Builds a flat deck down there, with no 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 means for water runoff. That he can't figure out water runs off. Um, I, I don't believe that. Now that's not bias. I just don't believe it because the guy zones his roof. Let me come up here for a second. He zones his roof off pretty good for water runoff. So now you're telling me he can't. He gets to a parking lot and he's like, oh water, oh. Oh, water just doesn't go on the roof. Oh, I, I, wow. I, I don't believe that. So I think he, he, he resolved this water issue. And I think they canceled it out with their retaining wall systems they put in there. And also the pavers, etc. And that they leveled his system. 
you can see here he's result on his roof plan this is the four inch roof drain and he's zoned this roof up to many zones it's got a lot of redundancy in it one can overflow to the other it's the way the water pitches he zoned this whole square up into four zones so the water pitches down to there four inch rd i believe stands for roof drain and you've got your elevations he made them all apparently the same elevations oh, pretty close here's a higher one um 23 23 26 okay so he's re he's resolved his roof drains issues here's a two and a half inch uh splash block he even covers all that stuff for water from water coming off the top roof there onto this lower roof but you're going to use a splash block, not just directly into it. Look at this pitch. P-I-T-C-H. He actually says pitch. The roof is pitched. Which direction? So, he, this engineer, Carcatac, did not make a mistake on that, on that pad down below. So, th that's my position. Um, all right. So, again, so we have the elevator shaft that is elevator machine room stairs. We have this lady making it from the stairs. I don't know where exactly she comes from, but she makes it down there five, six flights of stairs. Five, sl five flights, and then she says she's in a parking garage, so that's six. And if you look at the elevation on the fifth floor, she's coming off the fifth floor. She went 53 feet plus the garage um, depth. But she went, you know, steps don't go straight down on the, on the fire escape. They go back and forth on the stairs, egress. They go back and wind back and forth, and she doesn't look like a fast mover. And she was over here. So I think the uh, collapse down here gave everybody, you know, the get out of town thing, where to get out of town. And some people decided to phone home, make phone calls, as we talk about. Those people didn't, they thought that, uh, you know, they're not going to leave the safety of their, of their home, I guess. And the others knew that this is not right. I'm out of here. We're out of here. Pack it up. The guy came from the 11th floor. To come down to meet her. So if it's the fire escape and he's over here, then um, I don't think he's over here and went away over there, right? I don't know where she is exactly. Terminate video, but just want to show you that there is quite some time that went by before the total collapse. That image we see online, you know, the collapse just sped up, whatever it is, whatever. I don't know why, but it is not the timeline of the collapse. I'm not even sure, you know, you know. Okay. They're, they're being nasty. They should show the images. Like we said, we need to see the video way before, minutes before. And minutes before, we would probably see a, a cloud of a little bit of smoke come up from the first from the, from the floor falling. And then we'd have to wait, 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 wait. So, uh, yeah, we got, we got a screwed up video on that one. Take care, and let's go from there. Oh, I don't think it's screwed up with the column, though. This column failing and then these failing. I think it's just timeline-wise. We got plenty of time between collapse, between uh, between multiple collapses here.